Hamas is surrounded in the south and now surrendering in the north. Israeli Defense Forces report that the terrorist group is on the verge of collapse in Gaza. And today, the United Nations is expected to hold another vote calling for a ceasefire. Meanwhile, the IDF reports that it has found evidence that a U.N. agency is in close quarters with Hamas. Chris Mitchell reports. Monday night, Israel's defense minister declared Hamas is near a breaking point in northern Gaza, marking a huge turnaround from October 7th. Among those who surrendered are also terrorists who participated in events of October 7, the same ones who went on murder sprees that killed children, who raped women, and are now in a situation where they only have one option, to die or surrender. As the humanitarian crisis grows, Israel plans to increase aid to the people of Gaza. But this video shows some aid is being commandeered by armed groups. On Israel's northern border, the IDF is responding to an increase in Hezbollah fire into the country. It's a front the White House is concerned could escalate into a regional war. We absolutely don't want to see this conflict spill over into Lebanon. We don't want to see a second front. We don't want to see it escalate and widen. Um, and so it is also in the context of that uh, that we're, uh, we're concerned about these reports. In another risk of escalation, Iranian-backed Houthi militia in Yemen struck a Norwegian oil tanker it says was headed for Israel. No injuries are reported. As the U.N. General Assembly prepares for a vote on a resolution calling for a ceasefire, Iran condemned the U.S. veto of a similar measure in the Security Council last week. The U.S. government once again demonstrated its full-fledged solidarity with the Zionist regime and its full complicity in these regrettable crimes against the oppressed people of Palestine. As the IDF continues to advance in northern and southern Gaza, a stark warning from Hamas about the hostages. A spokesman warned on Sunday that no hostage will leave the Gaza Strip alive without an exchange of more Palestinian prisoners in Israel as well as other demands. 138 hostages remain in captivity, including 20 women and two children. IDF troops continue to uncover evidence of Hamas hiding its war machine in civilian areas. This mosque included a Hamas training site, including a room used for combat simulation, weapons and explosives. The IDF also said it found bags from the UN Relief and Works Agency mixed in with the Hamas weapons. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Well, Sharon Haskell is the co-chair of the Christian Allies Caucus in the Israeli Parliament. She joins us now for more. You recently called on the European Parliament to cut off funding for UNRWA. Uh, what was their response? Well, um, actually, they were pretty shocked from the numbers and the fact that I brought to them. Um, they, most of the parliament members weren't even aware of the definition of UNRWA, what's its role, and how it actually operates. Now, you need to understand, UNRWA is profiting as long as this conflict between Palestinians and Israelis is alive. They turned the, uh, the, the title of a Palestinian refugee to actual uh, a profitable status. Um, and so we understand that in those UNRWA schools, there's incitement, there's education for violence and for hatred towards Jews. And we try to say, stop. It cannot be that an international community is funding an organization that is disguised as a humanitarian aid organization, but in reality, it actually supports terror and funds terror, particularly Hamas. And so uh, many of the facts, the names, you know, one of the principals of the UNRWA school was the actual spokesperson for Hamas. He was the head of the unions, of the teachers of UNRWA. And so bringing a lot of these evidence to their doorsteps, they were really shocked. And I think I was capable of building a coalition to fight UNRWA together, try to stop the, the funding and to eventually dismantle it. Should we try to have UNRWA uh, categorized as a terrorist organization? Um, there's, there's been allegations that they were um, complicit in holding the hostages. Uh, there's allegations that they were complicit in supplying aid to Hamas fighters. 
it, it, at, at some point, can't we say, well, let's follow the money and follow the money that goes to UNRWA and ultimately it goes to Hamas? Absolutely. I mean, you can see how the UNRWA funds are slowly funneling into the Hamas organization. Um, Whoever is a family member of Hamas, they're the one who are getting the jobs, the position. Just yesterday, uh, we actually entered a school where in the classrooms they were hiding bombs and ammunition, weapons. They shoot rockets just from these areas. More so, one of the entrance to the tunnel that was blew up yesterday and actually uh, uh, killed some of our troops was just near an UNRWA school. We found in a baby's room bags of UNRWA um, uh, humanitarian aid, and they were covering up for like a, a, a stock of ammunition and weapons just behind and inside it. So you understand that it goes side to side, this organization. I mean, try and think, if you take the UNHCR, where they actually, for the entire community of the worldwide refugees all around the world, they're hiring about 20,000 workers who work in different countries around the world to assist refugees. Just in Gaza, you have 10,000 employees just of UNRWA. The people who receive those jobs are family members and members of Hamas. It goes hand to hand. And so we have to put a stop. And the countries who fund UNRWA have to take responsibility and get transparency uh, and see where these funds are actually going to make sure that it doesn't go into the pockets of Hamas. Well, let's talk about the future. Uh, after, the, after the conflict, the U.S. is saying that they believe a revitalized Palestinian authority can actually come in and run Gaza and, and potentially a future Palestinian state. Uh, what do you say to that idea? I said absolutely not. We understand that we need to have zero tolerance towards radicalism, terrorism, violence. And the Palestinian Authority uh, uh, leadership has time after time, not that they didn't condemn the 7 of October massacre, but it actually supported that. Um, Jibril Rajoub just two weeks ago said that Hamas is part of the political spectrum of the Palestinians. He supported that massacre that they committed on the 7th of October, and that's from the leadership of the Palestinian Authority. I mean, they are funding the pay for slave program the more Jews you kill, the more time you need to serve in prison, the bigger your salary will be. And this is a salary for life. So an authority and a leadership that continues to perpetuate hatred, violence, that continue to call for war against Israel, we cannot accept that anymore. As Israel, and I believe we have to do a certain switch and understand that we need to have zero tolerance to violence and terrorism. Only this way we'll be able to maybe uh, uh, have in our region an organization from the Palestinian that will grow, that will actually ask for peace, for coexistence, that will recognize Israel's rights to exist and to understand that the Jews are not going to go anywhere. I mean, this is our home. We understand the Palestinians are not going anywhere, but until they recognize our right in our homelands, our existence, we respect that, you know, a peace is going to be very far away from us. How can Christians support Israel right now? Well, first of all, I really thank you for your prayers and the love and the support that we receive for the, from the entire Christian community. Um, and, and, and the main thing that you can do is actually pressure your representatives, your government representatives, in order to ask them to request and demand uh, answers on where the UNRWA's funds are going. There are millions and hundreds of millions of dollars that America, Europe, uh, uh, you know, Africa, in, in Asia, Australia, that are donating to this organization that at the core of it is literally per perpetuating hatred and violence. So call your representative and ask for answers. Where does your money go? 
if it goes to a terrorist organization at the end of it, we have to change it together. We will do that, and we will continue praying for you, praying for the peace thank of Jerusalem. Thank you so much. And thank you for thank being you with very us. Much. Thank you. Well, in southern Israel, Jewish communities stand empty. Fields are filled with crops yet to be harvested. Hundreds of thousands of Israeli reserves are serving on the front lines, so there's no one to do the work. And that's why Christians from all over the world are coming to Israel to help. Paul Strand reports. One major reason led 75 Christians from 10 different nations to visit Israel in the middle of a war, risking danger and paying high travel costs. They say it's to be the hands, feet, and hearts of Firms Relief projects, which include cleaning up evacuated homes along the Gaza border and helping farmers in the field. We have about 300 people serving in five different sites, helping to harvest vegetables, working in the agricultural space, and we're helping to repair and rebuild some bomb shelters, paint and clean to help these people that are about to return home. Imagine taking all your vacation time and your vacation money and coming to a land at war just to help the people who live there. This is a great time to come and show our love in practical ways and let them know that they are not alone. We Christians in other parts of the world are praying and we feel so sorry. We feel their, their sadness. It's a responsibility that you should take. We do need to take action. You can't just say, I'm standing with Israel and do nothing. As the international volunteers are meeting Israelis, they're being asked, why have they come during a war? And a lot of them are surprised that we would come now. And I think that's saying something that we're not just coming to tour, but we're coming because we love you. <laughs> we're maybe two kilometers from the border, if that. And so people are here and we're picking oranges and lemons and pomelos. Trees are overflowing. There's fruit falling on the ground. And so I would say the work is imperative. Produce in this area makes up 60 to 70 percent of our nation's produce. I am 15 years old, and when I heard that I could actually come here and help with people who were affected by the war, I jumped at the chance. The members of the community where the volunteers are working fled from the Hamas terrorists after October 7th. I'm from Yavne, Israel, and I just finished my serving in the army. I think that uh, the people of the road were really appreciated that the a Christian group of people from all over the world come here and just help them. I think it will maybe open their hearts too. To see that non-Jews from countries they've never even heard of before are coming to serve and support during this time, it changes everything for them. By the end of the day, homes are freshly painted, bomb shelters have makeovers, kitchens are spotless, and yards ready for the evacuees to come home. Paul Strand, CBN News, reporting from Dorot, near the Gaza border. Oh, what a wonderful idea. If you want to volunteer, we've got more information for you. All you have to do is go to CBNNews.com to say, okay, uh, I, I want to find out more. Uh, how, how, how would this work? How would I even get to Israel? Uh, and and if, if that's you, if you say, yes, I would like to do that, we've got more for you on CBNNews.com.